good morning to everybody for today's session uh, of the uh, regional um, uh, forum. Uh, today's morning will be devoted to hearing reports from national hubs, uh, which will be uh, played uh, uh, here in the room, and you will be able to see them also on the internet. After, the, uh, after we have seen the reports from national hubs, I will try to summarize the main points which were raised in the, in the uh, respective debates. And then uh, after a short break, we will have uh, a panel discussion where our uh, judges and former judges will address uh, the issues raised in the presentations. And also they will try to answer some of the questions that remained unanswered yesterday, and I'm sure there will be uh, an overlap uh, between those questions and, and things we will hear this morning. So I please now call the technicians to play the, uh, the recordings. Dear colleagues, greetings from the Belgrade City Hub, where we just had a very productive discussion of the challenges uh, that the COVID-19 pandemic poses to the protection of human rights in Serbia. Uh, we discussed three sets of issues. The first set of issues was, was the um, state of emergency that was uh, declared by the, the Serbian president, uh, together with the, uh, the, the prime minister and the president of the National Assembly and whether that state of emergency actually imposed measures of derogation from the convention pursuant to Article 15 and pursuant to the equivalent provision in the Serbian constitution. And uh, effectively, the, the participants in the, in the meeting were agreed that there was substantial uncertainty as to whether Serbia, in fact, implemented any measures of derogation or whether these were instead limitations on human rights that Serbia could have enacted even without a formal derogation from the convention. You will be aware that Serbia is one of 10 countries that has formally derogated pursuant to Article 15, whereas the remaining 37 states of the Council of Europe have not done so. And the participants were unclear as to the legal value in the formal sense of the Serbian derogation uh, that was done uh, on the basis of the state of emergency. The participants were, however, completely agreed that the basic purpose of the state of emergency under Serbian law was to, to reallocate competencies within the state in the sense that the executive branch could take over all of the authorities of government, uh, including the power to legislate from the legislative branch, and that that was the main point of the state of emergency. The second set of issues we, we discussed were the pending proceedings before the Serbian domestic courts that uh, uh, pose, uh, um, you know, that, that raise disputes regarding the implementation of human rights during the pandemic, both during the state of emergency and after it. Um, we had some statistics from the Constitutional Court, which has some 21 pending cases of normative control, where it basically decides on the constitutionality and compatibility with the European Convention of various uh, uh, legal decisions made by Serbian authorities during the state of emergency. Uh, uh, they also will have at some point a mass of individual cases uh, uh, on the basis of constitutional complaints, but it's too early at this particular time to assess what these cases will actually be dealing with. Uh, the regular courts, on the other hand, in criminal proceedings and otherwise, uh, have a multitude of cases dealing with various violations of the convention or various, pur pur various purported violations of the convention. Among them are the right to a fair trial, including the issue of uh, 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 holding trials by video conference and whether that posed, uh, uh, um, whether that actually violated the, the quality of arms component of the right to a fair trial. Uh, the, the issue of the suppression of um, peaceful assemblies or not so peaceful assemblies on the streets of Belgrade and the abuse of uh, uh, um, state power in, in using force uh, against the demonstrators. So these are some of the, the, the issues that are currently percolating through the Serbian judiciary that may end up eventually before the European Court in Strasbourg. Uh, 
Also, we discussed uh, the issue of identification of, sp of specific human rights challenges, and participants, uh, some of the participants uh, said that uh, basically some limitations of human rights were not um, uh, were not imposed with uh, the intention to uh, limit human rights, but basically they were uh, the consequence uh, of the lack of clear uh, and adequate procedures, uh, a good time frame, and also lack of coordination between different services. When we speak about the substance of different human rights violations, uh, participants said that many measures which were imposed were basically discriminatory in their nature. Um, the uh, Commissioner for the Protection of Equality also during the state of emergency issued several general uh, recommendations uh, on the improvement of situation uh, of uh, certain vulnerable groups. When we speak about those vulnerable groups, some of them which were identified were uh, persons with disabilities, uh, then Roma, uh, uh, again uh, uh, elderly or persons uh, uh, older than 65. Um, and uh, also, when we speak about uh, other groups, one of the issues which was a uh, part of the discussion was the right of education. This issue was already raised by Judge uh, Mirjana this morning, and uh, 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 converting to um, online um, uh, schooling uh, was also problematic for some uh, children coming from marginalized groups. Um, also, when we speak about the information that was, uh, or, or the freedom of expression, that was one of the issues which was uh, uh, also raised. On March 28, the government of Serbia adopted a conclusion on information during the pandemic, which basically prescribes the centralization of public information about the coronavirus pandemic during the state of emergency. And this, uh, this decision stipulated that all information regarding the pandemic uh, should be communicated to the public by the prime minister of uh, Serbia or a person authorized by the crisis team. However, the OSA mission in Serbia on uh, April 1st criticized and expressed concern for the free access of information. And uh, 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 it was uh, also discussed by participants. It is good that this decree was withdraw withdrawn on 2nd April, so three days after it was issued. Again, uh, uh, one of the issues which was raised uh, um, among participants was the court functioning or the uh, question of uh, Skype uh, hearings. Uh, the concern was that uh, basically Skype uh, hearing was introduced by the recommendation of the Minister of uh, Justice. It was uh, um, uh, 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 later on confirmed by the decision of the government, but uh, uh, participants uh, uh, believed that uh, there, were, there were no legal basis uh, for Skype uh, hearings. At the moment, also, they raise a concern uh, of uh, different issues, such as the quality of farms, uh, the access to a uh, lawyer, a uh, different range of uh, uh, penalties which were issued uh, uh, from, uh, for, uh, from different uh, courts. Uh, again, uh, some other issues were raised, and we also heard those issues by judges of the European Court of Human Rights this morning. One of those issues was the risk of domestic violence, which increased under the COVID-19 state of emergency, like in many other countries. And uh, at some point, the Ombudsman submitted an initiative to amend the decree on emergency measures in order to allow free movement of victims of domestic violence, which was confirmed. Uh, also, one of the issues which was raised uh, is the uh, treatment of migrants and asylum seekers. Uh, during the um, uh, state of emergency, uh, migrants, refugees, and asylum seekers were prohib prohibited from leaving the reception facilities in order to avoid uncontrolled movement within the country. And also, this measure was perceived by many participants as not only discriminatory, but also uh, improportionate. Perhaps the most important problem identified by the participants in the Belgrade meeting was the failure of the Serbian state to abide by the general rule of law value of providing accessible, clear, precise, and public guidance to its own population as to what the emergency measures adopted by the state required them to do. The state effectively needs to improve its game on, on articulating the, uh, the, the, the rules that it sets out, their rationale, and why they are necessary and continue to be justified when facing the COVID-19 pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, let me greet you on behalf of the uh, forum participants from Montenegro. Please allow me to share this report uh, after our discussion. For a while, Montenegro managed to resist COVID-19 
with the first cases confirmed on March the 17th, and nine days later, the Ministry of Health, upon the proposal of the Institute for Public Health, uh, brought, uh, or brought the order uh, declaring the pandemic. Uh, pandemic was declared for the entire territory of Montenegro and involved implementation of measures uh, imposed by the competent authorities. Since then, measures have been introduced depending on the epidemiological situation. These measures affected a number of rights and freedoms, including freedom of movement and right to privacy. Thus, Montenegro uh, has not introduced emergency, state of emergency or opted for derogation of the convention. However, a share of the public contested uh, the solutions, the arrangements under these uh, orders and the competencies of the Ministry of Health for issuing such orders on the grounds that the ministry overstepped uh, its powers. The orders were contested given that they were lower ranked regulations on the claim that they suspended uh, some of the provisions of the Montenegrin laws and the constitution that guarantees uh, certain rights and freedoms. In this regard, the Constitutional Court uh, decided on some of these orders, uh, such as uh, the one uh, banning uh, travel from Montenegro to countries affected by the pandemic. The court decided to dismiss the application for the assessment of the constitutionality and legality of these orders. With regard to the second topic or the second panel, we uh, agreed that COVID crisis was not just a health crisis, but was turning into an economic one, permeating many uh, spheres of life. Uh, we agree with the identification of the Convention rights that may be affected by COVID-19, as presented earlier by the esteemed judges of the uh, European Court of Human Rights. In Montenegro, uh, we uh, already have an evident situation of uh, breach of uh, Article 8 of the Convention, namely the National Coordination Body established by the Ministry Minister of Health for the purpose of uh, implementation of relevant laws on public health decided to publish the list of persons subject to self-isolation. The list of these persons uh, with the data that included names, surnames, uh, addresses and date of self-isolation uh, was posted on the government website, updated daily and was made available to the public for over a month. Following the decision of the Constitutional Court, we saw many complaints, uh, claims for damages before courts uh, for the violation of this right. I should report that the decision of the Constitutional Court quashed this decision of the National Coordination Body. As a consequence of these decisions, Montenegrin courts are now receiving uh, complaints uh, from the persons that were included in the list. We focused also on the issues of uh, access to court and right to fair trial. It seems to us that in this regard, we haven't had uh, reasons for concern uh, to date. Uh, Montenegrin courts for some two months uh, switched to a special regime where they handled the urgent cases, preserving direct hearings and direct trials without resorting to video links. Following this stage, the courts continued their regular work and Judging by the court statistics available, the COVID situation should not affect the length of trials. With regard to the third panel, 
We decided, for the sake of clarity, to categorize the cases related to uh, coronavirus. The Constitutional Court of Montenegro decided on the three cases that resulted from uh, the COVID situation. We mentioned already the decision of the Constitutional Court quashing the decision on publication of uh, the names of persons subject to self-isolation. Uh, now there are uh, subsequent complaints uh, on uh, uh, the grounds of uh, violation uh, of uh, uh, rights before domestic courts. We also mentioned earlier the decision on the constitutional of the Constitutional Court uh, on the constitutionality of some of the orders issued by the Ministry of Health that imposed restrictions of movement and uh, of freedom of movement and restriction of uh, freedom of assembly. We pointed out that the Constitutional Court thought that the Ministry of Health was indeed competent for uh, issuing such orders and that it had not overstepped its powers. With regard to the measures included in these orders that introduced uh, quarantine, self-isolation, uh, temporary travel bans, a uh, temporary ban on uh, entry to Montenegro, the Constitutional Court found that these measures were legal and proportionate restrictions with a legitimate aim and necessary in a democratic society. Since in Montenegro, uh, we had parliamentary elections at the end of August 2020. The Constitutional Court handled another case uh, that could be linked with uh, Article 3 of the op Optional Protocol to the Convention. Namely, the State Electoral Commission amended uh, its recommendations by stipulating that people in self-isolation or quarantine should vote by mail. However, the Constitutional Court uh, quashed these amendments as not aligned with the law and stated, instructed the uh, National Electoral Commission to find a way to enable these persons to exercise their voting right. In addition to the mentioned complaints resulting from the decision uh, to publish the names of uh, persons subject to self-isolation, uh, the domestic courts have received a number of cases related to the criminal offence failing uh, to comply with health regulations aimed at suppression of infectious disease uh, related to breaching self-isolation quarantine. All of these cases have been uh, disposed in the first instance uh, and uh, all the persons involved uh, were found guilty. The sentences that followed were mainly suspended sentences with some imprisonment sentences. These cases trigger also the issue of the conditions that these persons experienced while detained. Uh, thus, the Ombudsman found uh, uh, breaches of Article 3 of the Convention in some of these cases. In these cases, we can identify a clear link with the coronavirus. However, since uh, the coronavirus is impacting the economic situation and increasing the number of unemployed persons, uh, it is likely that Montenegrin courts will be receiving a certain number of labour disputes and cases uh, of uh, domestic violence. During the discussion, we pointed out that when it comes to sanctions for the criminal offence of failing uh, to comply with health regulations, raise the issue of proportionality given the range of fines imposed against some of these persons. Some of these fines were accompanied by imprisonment sentences as well. However, this issue is likely to become less topical uh, since in the meantime we saw amendments to the law on protection uh, from uh, infectious diseases uh, that stipulates more lenient sanctions.
when it comes to these criminal offences, during the discussion, we stated that in some cases, detention uh, related uh, to uh, this criminal offence uh, raised the issue of legality uh, under the Convention. The Administrative Court of Montenegro has a certain number of cases that challenge the legality of the decisions on isolation. Uh, these cases have not been disposed uh, thus far. In this regard, we can also consider the deficiencies of the uh, national uh, regulatory framework uh, with regard to the implementation of Article 5, Paragraph 1.E of the Convention, given that national legislation does not define uh, the competencies of courts or urgent time limits for examining the legality of deprivation of liberty. We can agree, lastly, that the measures currently being applied are less stringent than the ones applied during the initial stage of the crisis, when the state authorities were taken by surprise, although currently we are witnessing uh, an increase in the number of COVID cases in the country. We uh, highlighted the need for stronger uh, cooperation of all the relevant national authorities for the sake of uniform uh, practice and more efficient response to the problems caused by the crisis. Let me conclude by uh, thanking you all. Dear organizers, respected judges of the court, respected commissioner for human rights, participants, dear colleagues. At the outset, we would like to welcome the organizers' initiative to gather us all once again to talk about human rights topics, even in these troubled times under the new normal regime. This year has been challenging in many ways and COVID-19 pandemics has shown us how important and yet how fragile human rights are. Many things that we took for granted a few months ago, such as meeting face to face, greetings and hugs, travel or even a simple walk to the locally, local grocery store were taken away. Like the rest of the world, Croatia is fighting the current pandemic the best it can. In order to address the unprecedented pandemic crisis, Croatia has, like a number of other state, states, introduced measures interfering with the rights and freedoms of individuals. Consequently, several issues regarding the anti-pandemic measures and human rights protection were uh, at stake. Some of them were discussed today among the participants at the Zagreb session in light of the speeches and presentations we heard today. Nearly a month ago, the Constitutional Court of the Republic of Croatia has delivered its decision regarding the constitutionality of some of the measures issued by the National Headquarters for Civil Protection in relation to the COVID-19 pandemics. Number of the measures issued by the National Headquarters raised controversy among general as well as professional public. Measures that restricted the freedom of movement during the lockdown, prohibition of work on Sundays, measures of self-isolation, and overall competency of the national headquarters uh, to adopt such measures were the subject of the constitutional decision. In this light, we opened the discussion with the focus on some of the main issues and challenges that were left debatable after the publication of the Constitutional Court decision or were not yet argued among the Croatian professional public. Zagreb Hub discussion began with the focus on a state of emergency as the consequence of COVID-19 pandemic. The focus of the discussion in this part was on justification of the state of emergency itself and the respect of the constitutional proclamation procedure thereby. Our discussion group came to conclusion that mere proclamation of the state of emergency 
would not make significant difference since the subject of the measures imposed by the state were in substance measures for dealing with emergency. Therefore, the proclamation would be only declar declaratory in nature. As uh, to the redistribution of competences within the executive and the legislature, as a result of a state of emergency, the Constitutional Court of the Republic of Croatia dealt with this issue in its decision. The discussion continued in a form of brainstorming about the possible human rights violations that may come into consideration in the light of the ongoing pandemic. It was very interesting to see the possible human rights violations seen from the perspective of the national judges and state officials. We try to focus the discussion on possible human rights violations that are not so obvious and wouldn't be the first choice when you think about the human rights threatened by the pandemic, but are equally important, such as the right to a fair trial from the Article 6 of the Convention. During the discussion, group also pointed freedom from torture, the right to security and liberty, fair trial rights, the right to privacy, freedom of expression, freedom from discrimination and freedom of movement. It is interesting to say that participants from the Office of Obdutsman pointed out that some economical and work-related rights came into spotlight during this pandemic. All of the participants agreed that right to the fair trial should be protected and respected regardless of the pandemic. The closing discussion related to more concrete issues and pending cases uh, regarding the human rights and COVID-19. The participants are actually faced with. It seems to be a number of individual complaints before the domestic courts, as well as before other bodies, such as the Obdutsman Office, concerning particular and, in particular and individual human rights violations. The Office of Obdutsman has already received individual complaints regarding self-isolation, payments during the self-isolation period, access to elderly people, access to lawyers during the lockdown. There are also several individual constitutional complaints pending before the Constitutional Court. To conclude, today's discussion and the exchange of views was very fruitful and interesting and in many ways valuable to the participants. It was the unique opportunity to openly discuss the legal topics which are contemporary and important. On some topics, the agreement was reached almost anonymously, whereas on the others was not. Nonetheless, we find the disagreed issues to be as important because this kind of open discussion certainly contributes to the pluralism and democracy in the society. We believe that cooperation within the states and between the states and exchange of national practices to address pandemics is very important and welcomed. By gathering and discussing all our ideas, knowledge and even learning from each other's mistakes, we can surely beat the new virus and protect the human rights of all individuals. We thank you therefore once again for this opportunity and until we will be able to meet in person, we send our warm regards from Zagreb. The group in Sarajevo, comprising of judges of the Constitutional Court of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Supreme Courts of two entities, representatives from the Office of the Agent before the European Court and the Office of the Ombudspersons, as well as lawyers from Centers for Education of Judges and Prosecutors and uh, NGOs, had a broad discussion on the consequences of the pandemic on the human rights situation. These are the main observations concerning the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on human rights protection in Bosnia and Herzegovina. From the discussion on the state emergency in BIH, it resulted that as a consequence of the global situation regarding the spread of the pandemic due to the coronavirus COVID-19, BIH has declared a state of emergency in March 2020.
On the basis thereof, the civil protection authorities adopted a set of measures such as an obligation of self-isolation, isolation, ban on crossing the state border, restriction of working hours, curfew, schools were closed, public gatherings were banned, many non-essential businesses were shut down, etc., with one of the measures being the prohibition of movement for persons under the age of 18 and above age of 65 only in the Federation of BIH. From these actions, it is clear that they constitute limitations to many of convention rights, such as right to freedom of movement arising from lockdown due to health measures. The participants concluded, as the questions whether the constitutional proclamation was respected, that BIH acted automatically and made a decision on the state of emergency without a good assessment of the situation and needs at the time of proclamation. Unfortunately, redistribution of powers between legislature and executive in some parts of BIH endangered the legality of restricted measures due to inactivity of legislatures. However, there are also good examples, such as in Republika Srpska, in which decisions of civil protection authorities, for example, the decision to ban assembly, was made arbitrarily, but the Parliament of RS reviewed the decisions subsequently, in which way the procedure was somewhat corrected. It is important that the Constitutional Court, in its decision from April 2020, stipulated that each measure should be considered in more detail, considering the individual interests and rights. As to the possibility of derogation, BIH did not inform the Council of Europe that it is availing itself of the right to derogate certain rights of the European Convention, pursuant to Article 15 of the European Convention. It was concluded that the derogation of human rights in BIH system would be a delicate issue because the convention is part of the domestic legal order and therefore the derogation would not preclude the application of constitutional obligations having in mind that the constitution prescribes that the convention takes precedence over all other laws. Regarding the identification of specific human rights challenges, the group had a clear picture of pandemic-induced human rights violations in Bosnia and Herzegovina. These have happened in several forms, but there are some that draw attention, such as uh, right to freedom of movement from Article 2 of Protocol 4, uh, Article 5, the rights to liberty were apparently violated, by sending persons to quarantine or hospitals without any decisions. Article 5, publishing the personal data of persons in isolation was mentioned as a direct violation of the right to privacy. Relating to the potential human rights violations, the participants stated that the following could be an issue. Article 2 of Protocol 4, right to freedom of movement, can lead to violation of disabled persons given the social distance rule. Article 8, a large number of people respond to psychological counseling due to, to domestic violence. And regarding domestic violence, the participants expressed concern, concerns regarding the fact that lockdowns and quarantines could trigger more numerous incidents of domestic violence for reasons that include increased stress, cramped and difficult living conditions. Imposed measures were not gender sensitive and did not take into account needs of marginalized groups. Rights of asylum seekers and migrants to movement healthcare, secure accommodation were not taken into account. Also, an important question was what, what human rights could be invoked by the lack of access to healthcare, having in mind that the media informed that many patients could not reach family or any doctors, and this does not only concern infected persons, but also others who are chronic patients. Regarding the views of participants on possible challenges in the implementation of Article 6 of the European Convention during pandemic, it was noticed that procedural rights are endangered. General conclusion is that the courts are facing a major challenge to maintain fair trials, and the examples were presented as follows. 
in complex cases in which there is a large number of witnesses or defendants in different locations, it is difficult to maintain fairness, especially with regard to the principle of reasonable time. Lack of space capacity of large courtrooms. On the other side, in small courtrooms, the measure of maintaining distance cannot be respected. Objective circumstances possibly exist now, but the question is for how long. If the pandemic persists, the problem will increase because the number of complex cases is large. Computer illiteracy in judiciary is a very problematic issue. The above reasons can lead to other violations such as Article 5 regarding long detention or other rights related to alternative measures as the trial is pending. Securing a public trial is a problem, but the court of BIH in its courtrooms, uh, but the court of BIH stated that the public is allowed in, it, in its courtrooms, but the number of people who can access is limited. Regarding the types of cases before courts and independent in institutions in BIH, the participants recall the decision of the Constitutional Court of Bosnia and Herzegovina considering two appeals related to the freedom of movement, one from the person over 65 and the parent of a person under 18. It was established by the Constitutional Court that the right to freedom of movement under Article 2 of Protocol 4 to the European Convention was violated as the imposed measures were not proportional to the legitimate aim. Clearly, the decision relies on the standards enshrined in the European Convention on Human Rights. As to any other complaints related to protection of personal data, there are the cases that have already been submitted to the Court of BIH and the Agency for Data Protection of BIH, but they are still pending. As a final conclusion, participants felt that a number of measures were not in accordance with the standards and that respect for Convention human rights must be a guiding principle for policy responses, but also all bodies acting in accordance with the adopted measures. Therefore, the proactive approach of independent institutions, such as Ombudsperson, would be very welcome. On behalf of all participants in today's City Hub in Skopje, we would like to express our gratitude to the organizers, Air Center and Civil Rights Defenders, for organizing this extraordinary ordinary forum regarding the human rights in the uh, time of coronavirus pandemic. I must say that uh, we have a great discussion with great speakers, great participants, which were very proactive, expressing, expressing their uh, uh, attitude and their opinion about the human rights uh, state and human rights violations in the Republic of North Macedonia during the uh, pandemic. Also, I want to stress that uh, during the discussion, uh, all participants uh, identified several factors that are representative uh, for uh, evaluation of the time of uh, pandemic and its uh, relation to the human uh, rights and liberties. So uh, I must emphasize that one of the uh, uh, factors that were identified was the role of the Constitutional Court of the Republic of North Macedonia. Regarding that, uh, uh, North Macedonia, when uh, the president declared the emergency state, uh, had a dissolved uh, assembly because uh, North Macedonia was preparing in that time for the parliamentary elections. And all the powers in the country was absorbed by the executive, by the government, which started to issue a government decree for regulation of the new state regarding COVID-19. Uh, 
So, uh, uh, the main discussion regarding the role of the Constitutional Court was that uh, this uh, institution, this judicial institution in, in uh, our country, uh, take one of the pillars of the political system as a corrector of the government policies and government actions in order to discipline the governmental uh, behavior in relation to human rights because we are all aware that during the pandemic and during the, the emergency state, uh, human rights and liberties uh, were restricted in some measure and were suspended in some measure. And uh, the role of this uh, institution was and uh, today also is to define the red line which the uh, political uh, bodies, political elite or the government cannot pass uh, at the sake or at the human rights sake. Also, we discussed about the role of Ombudsman in the uh, Republic of North Macedonia as one of the systemic pillars for protection of human rights and liberties. Uh, the uh, ordinary courts of the Republic of Macedonia, which are also one of the uh, most important stakeholders in whole uh, legal and political system of uh, our country. So uh, we stress the uh, human rights and liberties which are derived from the European uh, Convention of Human Rights, emphasizing the uh, governmental decree uh, regarding uh, them and also the uh, activity of other institution, institutions in uh, this sense. I want to, uh, I want to say that uh, we conclude that this behavior of our institutions during, during this pandemic and this emergency state uh, results with some opinions and ideas uh, considering the need for uh, delivering, delivering a law on emergency state in Macedonia, in North Macedonia. Also, uh, we discussed and we stressed uh, the need for uh, more or greater awareness of the political institutions for the significance of the human rights and liberties, especially in the pandemic context, and the need for more proactive role of various stakeholders, uh, such as constitutional court, uh, ordinary courts, uh, ombudsman, and other institutions in our country. During our fr uh, fruitful discussion in Skopje uh, City Hub, most of the participants uh, both from the judiciary and uh, from the NGOs expressed their concerns about uh, the uh, fact that uh, most of the decrees which were adopted by the government uh, was, were, uh, were aimed uh, to be applied uh, even after the period uh, uh, for which uh, the state of emergency uh, which was declared. Uh, they also raised the issue whether uh, the state of emergency uh, was abused by the executive authorities, uh, even for adopting decrees and introducing certain measures, uh, which, was not, which, was not, uh, which did not uh, pursue the legitimate aim of protection of health. Uh, also during the discussion, the most important uh, and most relevant rights and freedoms protected under the convention, uh, which might, might have been uh, uh, engaged uh, with these measures, were identified by the participants. Uh, it was stressed that the government's decrees uh, suspending the running of the time limits in civil, criminal, and administrative dispute proceedings uh, might have uh, had a, a uh, significant uh, impact uh, on the uh, exercise of the right to fair trial, in particular uh, that they might uh, result in a denial of the access uh, to justice. Uh, 
uh, it was also stressed, especially by, by criminal judges, uh, that the right to uh, effective enjoyment of the procedural safeguards under Article 6, uh, in particular the right uh, to, uh, defen to effective uh, defense uh, and to effective communication uh, with the defense lawyer, uh, could have been uh, endangered. Uh, it was also mentioned uh, that um, there could uh, be a problem um, f because of the uh, decision uh, taken by the government uh, to uh, suspend uh, the enforcement of uh, certain court uh, decisions and uh, also the uh, enforcement, uh, the execution of uh, criminal uh, penalties. Um, another issue which was, which was addressed uh, was uh, the question whether uh, the uh, whether the Macedonian judiciary, uh, judiciary uh, with its limited IT infrastructure, uh, could have um, ensured a public uh, trial and effective uh, fair trial uh, guarantees for all parties to the proceedings. Uh, NGOs expressed a particular concern uh, with respect uh, to uh, the uh, compliance uh, by the state with its positive obligation uh, to uh, take certain preventive and operational measures in order uh, to uh, ensure uh, and to, pre to prevent domestic violence and to ensure that uh, persons uh, who are potential victims of domestic abuse uh, won't uh, suffer during the con confinement at home. Uh, given the limitations and restrictions imposed on the freedom of movement. Um, also, certain issues under uh, Article 8 uh, was, uh, were raised. In particular, the introduction of um, the launching, actually, of a GPS application, uh, which aimed uh, to track uh, the movement of persons. Uh, also, uh, the disclosure of personal data information about uh, persons who got infected uh, by COVID-19 and uh, persons who got in, uh, ca in contact with such uh, persons. Um, another issue uh, was um, the right to education, uh, which uh, special, especially affected persons belonging to certain vulnerable and disadvantaged uh, groups in the, societies, in the society, um, especially uh, considering the fact that not all uh, children uh, had uh, effective access to online communication platforms uh, through which uh, the remote uh, uh, education and instruction was uh, provided. Um, also, one of the conclusions of the discussion was uh, that uh, whenever ordinary courts and the constitutional courts are faced in future with cases which might uh, raise certain issue under the convention, they should carry out an individual assessment of the circumstances uh, in order to uh, evaluate uh, in a proper manner whether uh, the uh, measures introduced uh, were uh, proportionate, whether they were um, necessary and they were proportionate uh, to uh, serve a certain legitimate aim of protection of health. Uh, in any case, the lessons learned from the previous experience uh, with tackling the pandemic uh, and with the effect, the impact of the measures adopted in response to the pandemic on the individual rights uh, should be uh, had in mind by the government when adopting and introducing certain measure, uh, measures in future. And it is uh, for the courts, in particular the constitutional and the ordinary courts, uh, to, um, to carry out a proper balancing exercise uh, and uh, to apply uh, uh, pro pro properly the uh, proportionality, text, uh, proportionality analysis uh, in order to ensure that the convention standards are complied with and any future violations, uh, any future cases um, uh, are not um, brought uh, to the court. And uh, just uh, to mention that also the right to election was one of the rights uh, which, uh, was, uh, uh, which could have been uh, violated uh, because uh, uh, given the uh, decision uh, taken by uh, the government uh, to limit uh, the exercise of this right for those persons uh, who uh, were uh, um, already diagnosed with COVID-19.
Good evening from Tirana. Uh, we attend today the forum The Impact on the Human Rights During the Pandemic Situation COVID-19. And uh, today we are going to uh, give some concluding remarks on the discussion and the Tirana Hub uh, between the representative of the NGOs, uh, judiciary and the independent institution. Some of the concluding remarks are as below. The grounds of limitation of the rights and freedoms under the Convention permit the states to limit the rights and freedoms inter alia in the name of the protection of health, etc. Derogation based on the Article 15 should be considered in extreme conditions, such as armed conflicts, war, etc. In addition, Council of Europe bodies should observe the criteria of the Convention in relation to the justification of the derogation under the Article 15. In 1997, Albania declared the state of the emergency as a result of the civil unrest in the country and also deposited derogation under the Secretary General of the Council of Europe, requested state authorities to submit a copy of the text of rules and measures adopted and their relevance to the respective measures under the derogation articles of the Convention. The rules regarding the measures have generally been adopted in a hurry, without consultation, often notified overnight through online platform of communication, Facebook and Twitter, etc., resulting in conflicting situation between the provisions of the emergency acts and the existing legislation with no clear indication as to the objective of rule and correct manner of observance. Lack of preparation and training has resulted in law enforcement agencies using excessive and uh, unreasonable force against citizens, in some cases minors. Limitation of rights and freedoms under the Convention posed serious concerns in Albania, particularly in view of the vetting process currently in progress in Albania. The judiciary operates in a very limited capacity with the High Court and Constitutional Court out of the function as a result of the vetting process and removal of judges. The pandemic situation has significantly affected the situation, leading to multiple obstacles to the functioning of the judiciary and observance of the individual rights to access to courts, speedy and public trial, etc. Our broad rules and predictable, unclear as well as inapplicable regulation Minors ask to declare upon their own responsibility whether they have COVID-19 or not, have accompanied the months of the emergency. Rules regarding the restriction in many cases have not been published as per the constitutional provisions. The most affected groups are the marginalized communities and national minorities, which have been affected not only by the pandemic, but also by the measures adopted by the state. Suspension of classes as a result of the pandemic has contributed to prevent equal access to education of children from national minorities and marginalized communities, resulting in unequal condition of children coming from families with low income. Data gathered from the civil society organization show that over 60% of the children from Roma communities have not had access to online classes due to the lack of the access to the internet, uh, to the power devices, etc. Such difficulties may contribute to difference in the level of the education and potentially in the incentives to abandon education. This is especially sensitive in the case of girls and women from Roma communities that marry in early age. It is important to consider that women are often subject to intersectional and multiple discrimination. The measures against the pandemic have heightened their burden in relation to being exposed to a higher risk versus the virus. Thus, the majority of the economic and trade activities that were accepted from the suspension include works performed by women, while they also bear the main responsibility for child care in view of the closure and suspension of the schools. The executive exercise powers resulting in the limitation of rights and freedoms that according to the Constitution can be limited only by law. The closure of the courts lead to the adoption of rulings by the executive without overview, judicial control and evaluation. The right to the assembly have been limited without no observation of the proportionality pr principle. Limitation 
limitation of the right to move to one person per family resulted in the heavy burden of elderly people and those living in informal settings or on a registered status. Restriction to move were disproportionate and discriminatory, potentially affecting economic, social, mental well-being of individuals. Medical institutions have very limited resources and many have expressed the concern that are not able to respond to the needs of the situation. Several cases of suicide of patients infected with COVID-19 while under the care of health professionals both concerns with regard to medical protocols and the positive obligation of state authorities under Article 2 of the Convention. Submission of application only online through official online platform has resulted in discrimination for families and individuals without income and means to access such services. Such applications include important issues related to property, permission to move during the day, etc. The criminal code was amended to include criminal offenses related to the spread of the virus. The new provisions were adopted in a speedy manner without public consultation and technical expertise. Normative Act establishing operation the force of law was adopted during the emergency without consultation. It gives the police the power to size property of the certain category of the crime. It conflicts with existing legislation on the anti-mafia measures and it has the potential of affecting the right to property and the right to due process in view of the suspension of court proceedings. Those are some of the concluding remarks of the discussion of the today hub in Tirana. Meanwhile, uh, the representative of the NGOs, uh, civil society, independent institution and the judiciary are tomorrow and today to pose some questions to the panel of the judges and former judges of the court. Thank you very much. My name is Fleur Cabra, and today I will be summarizing for you the discussions that we had uh, in today's forum, in this year's forum. Today we had here judges from the Constitutional Court, Supreme Court, and other regular courts. Also, we had representatives from the Ombudsperson Institution and the Justice Academy. The discussion can be summarized in two main parts. Uh, firstly, we have to talk about the decisions of uh, the government uh, due to the, as a response of the pandemic. And uh, the second part was the results of these decisions. Regarding the government decisions, we have to emphasize the fact that they were found to have surpassed the government's competences and somewhat resembled more like der derogation of human rights than limitations of them. Nonetheless, the first decision of the government was found by the Constitutional Court to not have sufficient legal basis. Therefore, since the principle of legality was not met, uh, the Constitutional Court did not elaborate more on the issue of necessity and proportionality principle. Another important issue raised in, these, uh, in, in this uh, Constitutional Court decision was the importance of amending or drafting a new law that would provide the government with the sufficient legal basis to address the limitations necessary during the pandemic. Therefore, the parliament adopted a new law addressing COVID-19, uh, thus filling the legal gaps that, that existed before. On the other hand, the second decision by the government was found to be partially in line with the constitutional provisions. All participants here today praise the good job of the Constitutional Court since the decisions were made in a record time and set necessary standards to face this unprecedented situation. Other challenges identified during the discussion he here today were the human rights violations, such as the freedom of movement, freedom education since not every child had access to technology and this affected mostly children from the Roma community and children from poor families. The access to health care for those that had other health issues rather than the virus. This was another issue mentioned and that need to be addressed. 
as for Article 6 of the Convention, uh, the right to a fair trial was confirmed to be challenging not only by the pandemic, but also from the large backlog of cases waiting to be reviewed by the courts. On the other hand, issues such as domestic violence during this time were one of the priorities of the courts. This also as a result of the increased number of domestic violence cases during the pandemic. As for the cases before court, we have to state that government decisions initially created ambiguities on the implementation. Therefore, the Supreme Court, based on two other decisions from the Constitutional Court, gave a legal opinion concerning cases that, the, that the were sent as criminal offenses and were not foreseen by the criminal code. Claims received by the ombudsperson institution, on the other hand, are 30% less than the previous year. This can be also a result of the lockdown that we had for a long time. However, during this period, most of the claims in the ombudsperson institution were regarding the lengthy procedures, but this time not only in courts, but also in other administrative bodies. Another issue that, were, the, that uh, needs to be addressed and uh, seems to be problematic is uh, the loss of jobs by many uh, citizens here. Thus, this uh, is um, a problem for, for every citizen because they cannot uh, gain money and thus can earn their living. But uh, nonetheless, the main conclusion of the discussion was that in times of crisis like this, institutions should proactively ensure the absolute rights of the citizens, even if uh, re some relative rights can, uh, will come second. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you very much for all the videos and all the interesting and important submissions from the relevant hubs. Uh, there is only one correction to be made, and this is that from Pristina we have heard uh, Flaka Braha, who is an independent researcher and PhD candidate in law, so she was not properly uh, identified in the video, and we do apologize for this. Uh, the, uh, we have seen that the main challenges which were identified in the, uh, in the respective country reports were more or less corresponding to our topics that were covered today, and I think more or less correspond to the topics that were uh, extensively and well covered uh, in the guide that was distributed. We have seen in many countries the problems have arisen due to the uh, certain legislative gap that was there, that was created basically by the absence of proper laws which are regulating the issues of uh, state of emergency. Governments were adopting uh, decrees which very often did not have a proper legal basis. And in some countries we have seen constitutional courts reacting and then uh, parliaments properly following on those uh, on those measures. But certainly a question arises in the application of these decrees, to what extent would then uh, uh, courts have to be uh, diligent and uh, uh, what should be approach to those, uh, to such situations. Uh, then uh, an interesting point in several of the submissions that was raised is that the information on the action taken by the governments and the, on the measures to address them was not properly communicated to the public. And this created a lot of uncertainty and I think this was covered yesterday by uh, Judge Sieber Ford in her presentation. Um, there is certainly a number, a significant number of cases pending before uh, courts. This concerns civil and criminal jurisdictions. Interestingly, we have heard also an element of execution of judgments which should not be uh, forgotten. It concerns only uh, not only execution of uh, civil judgments, but also execution of criminal court uh, 
judgments and convictions. Uh, another interesting point is that we have seen that the constitutional courts have been active, but so far constitutional courts were mostly addressing the general issues related to the, uh, to the, to the regulation that the governments uh, introduced on COVID measures. Uh, regularity that applies before national courts and which is probably also uh, applicable to the European Court of Human Rights is that there are still no proper COVID cases before individual cases be be before those uh, courts uh, being decided. Of course, I'm talking about superior courts. Uh, the uh, institution of the Ombudsman was in several, uh, several submissions in particular emphasized, and I think it's very important to be aware of, uh, of the important work that Ombudsman have, and this was certainly underlined by several uh, participants. Uh, specific human rights issues that were addressed in the submissions were mostly related to the issues of Article 6, right to a fair trial, and we see that in several submissions, the, prob the already existing problems such as significant backlog of cases, or as we have seen in Albania, the problem of vetting of judges is compounded now with the COVID crisis, and this creates a, a, a very significant and important burden on the system. Um, uh, of course, uh, vulnerable groups in the society were also mentioned. There is a problem of the right of education, there is a problem of, vict of uh, domestic violence, uh, and there is, of course, problem of IT uh, 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 literacy, if you wish, of some parts of the population. And in one of the submissions, it was even mentioned illiteracy of the judiciary. And this is something that has to be, uh, that has to be uh, also addressed. Uh, the problem of other disadvantaged groups, such as migrants, uh, uh, was also mentioned in several, in several uh, submissions. Interestingly, almost all national reports also refer to problems of economic uh, and social nature. And this only shows that, you, that uh, uh, civic rights cannot be completely dissociated from the economic and social reality which they op where they operate. And, uh, and this was very much emphasized by several of the uh, participants. Uh, importantly also is the uh, few participants also mentioned the issues of prisons and situations that are, that are arising there. And uh, in this context, there was also a, a, a big question posed as to the proportionality of criminal sanctions that were applied in some of the jurisdictions. Some of them even relate to the possibility of imposing imprisonment. And uh, uh, this may put into question the problem of uh, proportionality. Uh, uh, we have also seen in uh, several uh, of the reports that there is an important domestic debate and not necessarily full agreement at the very domestic level on how all these issues affect and how they should be addressed. And uh, therefore, uh, it was emphasized that dialogues such as this one are particularly uh, important. Uh, one of the other points uh, with respect to introduction in some states, state of emergency, in other states uh, uh, who resorted to uh, derogations, and yet another uh, who did not apply any of those two measures but simply proceeded on the basis of the regular uh, legislation trying to limit respective rights, uh, was also raised as an issue, and we have seen that there is a certain disagreement as to the relevance of formal declarations of states of emergency or, uh, or uh, derogations. Uh, and finally, uh, an, uh, a common point between all submissions was uh, that courts would have to take a, a proper balancing exercise when never faced with such cases, and that this should also advise the executive and adopting laws uh, uh, to thoroughly uh, think about those laws and to think about their possible uh, application in practicing individual uh, cases. <laughs>
So this summarizes the, uh, the submissions of the respective uh, hubs. Uh, in the second part now, after the coffee break, we will have a reflection by our panel on these uh, topics and some further questions that were put yesterday uh, by the participants will also be addressed. So now is a coffee break and see you at 10.50. Uh,